We are observing Kartik Brata, hearing commentary on Shikastaka. Now we are at third verse. Commentary by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Vasavi Thakur. We came to one second. We heard that those who have false ego, materialistic persons, they can never be humbler than a blade of grass, can have no natural tolerance, and they cannot give respect to others and are not indifferent towards their own respect. They are eligible, but uh, this is materialistic person, but by Shnavas, those who are doing Nam Bhajan, they are finding joy in Nam Bhajan. They uh, have these four qualities and they are only eligible to chant constantly Harinam. The prestige indicative of honor that the pure Vaishnavas offer to their respective acharjos and Sri Guru Devas and to other Vaishnavas is produced by their natural propensity to offer honor. And all the cordiality, respect, affection and so forth that they express towards their followers to inspire them in service is simply expressive of such pure devotees natural pridelessness. So pure Vaishnavas they offer respect to their acharjas and gurus and Vaishnavas and they are affectionate and also respectful and cordiality to their disciples uh, to inspire them in service is simply expressive of such pure devotees natural pridelessness. Pure devotees do not consider such honorary prestige to be material prestige and by tolerating the insinuations of the foolish they reveal their tolerant nature. I saw in Gurudev he was never proud in dealing with us. He was having affection, respect also. One time, Gurudev was going from Tulsi Parikrama and I offered Dandavat and Gurudev also with, with folded hands, he also did like that. That time I uh, really, Gurudev has no false ego, no false pride, nothing, and really is respectful to all. I felt that time when he did like this. Like he's also, he did not bow down, but like this little with head and with folded hands like this. He made. But it is difficult to express if if you don't see it, if you don't feel it, how they are established in these four qualities. And if someone criticizes them, then they, they are just tolerant. They don't mind anything. Uh, but if someone criticizes gurus and Vaishnavas, then they will protest immediately. Like one time our Gurudev in Tezpur, Bauriyamat, one person was rebuking him so much because something happened with the bathroom and it was not Gurudev's fault, but somehow one devotee became 
that was during the time of Gurudev when he was Brahmachari. So that devotee became irritated and started to speak, uh, criticizing Gurudev so much. But when Gurudev came out into the room, that man was still shouting. And one another devotee said to Gurudev, that time Brahmachari, Krishna Barabra, you don't hear what he's speaking and uh, you, you have to say something then. Then you say, no, what, who is speaking what? Means he was totally unmindful of that. He was not the least disturbed or irritated or, or anything. He just passed. He, he was not even aware of that that someone is criticizing him, totally without any foreseeing. Or sometimes when Gurudev was already Acharya, then some, they spoke something against them. Some other devotees, they said to Gurudev, you have to do something, otherwise they will continue. It is not good they are speaking. Then you said, no, why? Krishna is very merciful to me. He saw those insults and criticism as mercy of Krishna. So only pure devotee can see like this. No uh, disturbance or revenge mood or like this. Pure devotees engaged in chanting the name consider themselves to be situated in a position beneath even the grass that is trampled over by the feet of all living beings in the material world. Pure devotees never consider themselves to be Vaishnavas or Gurus. They consider themselves disciples of the world and lower than everyone else. That is Uttamadikari Dhap. They see all are engaged in the service of Krishna, except me. So they never have this ego, I am Guru, I am Vaishnava. No, they are always disciples of their Guru. And only if Guru or Krishna give that order that they have to preach, they do it as a service to Krishna and Guru. Not that now I got this position, so now I can instruct others, never with such force. And they, they never have this mentality that they are owning disciples, that their disciples are their property, or what disciples have, it is their, it is Guru's property. No, never. They see all are Krishna servants, so I have to engage them in the service of Krishna and what they have, it is not mine, it is meant for the service of Krishna. So they engage everything, not abusing, not uh, misusing anything for their own selfish purposes. Knowing every atom and every minute conscious jiva to be an abode of Krishna, they do not consider anything to be inferior to themselves. That is, we are singing Krishna Adishtana Sarva Jiva Jani Sada. They see everywhere Krishna is there residing. So how they can think something is inferior to me? Those who chant the name are not seekers of anything from anyone in this world. If others are inimical to them, they are never vengeful, vengeful. They don't like strike back. Rather, they pray for the welfare of their aggressors. Like we see Ambrish Maharaj, he prayed for the benefit of Durvas Rishi. Also, Nitananda Prabhu, the Jagai Madai, also Horidas Thakur. Even we see in Jesus Christ, he also prayed for their welfare. Those who perform Kirtan, 
never abandon the process they received from Sri Gurudev and never with the desire to preach a new conception, create a jingle of imaginary names instead of chanting the Maha Mantra of Sri Hari's holy names. Uh, you know that Uh, Nita Gaur Nita Gaur Hare Krishna Hare Ram No, I forgot the one. One is Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Hare Krishna Hare Ram Shri Radhe Govinda This is one. Another is Nita go Radha Shyam Hare Krishna Hare Ram. Yes. They, they sing instead of Mahamantra. That is not good to compose like this. We have to chant Panchatattva Mantra as it is and Mahamantra as it is. Not invent some new things. So, those who perform kirtan never abandon the process they received from Sri Gurudev. Bonafide Guru gave this kirtan, but they make something different. And never with the desire to preach a new conception, create a jingle of imaginary names instead of chanting the Maha Mantra of Sri Hari's names. When a Vaishnava following Sri Gurudev writes a book and performs kirtan to spread the glories and kirtan of the divine name, their humility is not compromised. In the previous point, because that one Babaji was there, he like suddenly got one dream and he in that dream, which was actually not bona fide, he saw that Nitananda is like is Radharani, although that is not true. Nitananda is Baladev or Ananga Manjari in another form, but not Radharani. But that he got some dream and then he thought Nitananda is Radharani, so he made that, uh, that line Nitai Gaur Radhe Shyam Hare Krishna Hare Ram as names of Radha Krishna. Like Nita Gaur means Radha and Krishna, then Radha Shyam and Hare Krishna, Hare Ram. So this conception was wrong because Nitananda is not Radharani. And Nitananda you cannot put by Radha Krishna there because Nitananda is going away when Radharani is there to, to not disturb that rasa, only in the form of Ananga Manjari he is appearing in another form. So that is rasa bhas, because that was not bona fide spiritual revelation. So that kirtan was not accepted by pure devotees like Srila Gorkishore Das Babaji Maharaj, also Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. Someone started chanting, then Jagannath Das Babaji said, no, this name is not allowed here. Is they, they, because they have their rasikas, they don't like to see such rasa bhas. So, when Vaishnava or Gurudev they write a book, that does not mean that they are proud, but they do kirtan to spread the glories and kirtan of the divine name. It is not for their own, like Monday name and famous, others are writing some books, no. They are writing exclusively for the satisfaction of Krishna, for spreading his glories. Deceitful expressions and gestures of meekness, however, made on account of the absence of sincerity out of the deceitful motive of misleading the public are not indications of humility. This is a long sentence. Point is, 
someone is outwardly showing like some humbleness, meekness, but it is not real, it is artificial. It is for gaining some respect from others, so that is not sincere humility, it is not counted here. because they have some deceitful motive of misleading public, like others will think, oh, I'm a great Vaishnava, I'm so humble, so they they do certain gestures, yes, I'm nothing, yes, Prabhu. But this is not natural humility, born from real ego. While chanting Krishna's name, great devotees, Mahabhagavats, see the world as intent upon the service of Krishna and his devotees instead of seeing moving and inert material forms as being meant for enjoyment. That is their vision. Everything is meant for the service of Krishna, not for my enjoyment. They do not, out of a predisposition to enjoy, consider the world to be meant for their own enjoyment. They do not become creators of mantras, give up the chanting of the Maha Mantra they received from Sri Guru, or engage themselves in propagating new conceptions. Like this, Nitananda is rather. That is new conception, it is wrong. And then another kirtan chanting, then, so that was not accepted. Considering oneself a guru of Vaishnavas hmm, is an impediment to humility. This is great offense. Considering oneself a guru of Vaishnavas is an impediment to humility. This is extreme false ego. It is uh, worse than to say I'm God. Like my Vadis, they say I'm God. But worse is to say I'm pure devotee, I'm topmost devotee, I'm the guru of other Vaishnavas. So, mm -hmm. Worst for Siva. The truth is that Hari's name cannot be chanted through the mouth of those who desire the position of a Vaishnava or Guru if they do not listen to the statements of Sri Gaurasundar in the Shikastaka and are forgetful of the true self out of greed for wealth and prestige for the sake of sense gratification. We sing that song of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Kripa Koro Vaishnava Thakur. Sambanda Janiya Bajite Bajite Obimana Haudur. Oh, my, oh, Vaishnava Thakur, please be merciful to me. Please reveal my relationship with Krishna and worshipping in that uh, relationship means for the satisfaction of Krishna, my false ego will go far away. Means I will be released. But Amito Vaishnava Buddhi Hoile Amani Nahobu Ami Pratishta Shayasi Hrido Edushive Hoi Boniro Yogami. But if I think I am a Vaishnava, then I can never be humble. Amito Vaishnava Buddhi Hoile Amani Nahobuami, never can I. Pratishtasha Asi, Hrido Edushive, this desire for respect, name and fame will come in my heart and will it pollute it and I will have to go to hell in suffering. Because that is possible. We are servant of a Vaishnava. Marginal potency Jiva, we are always subordinate to Suru Shakti. Suru Shakti, they are personal associates of Krishna. 
they are actually Vaishnavas or Gurus. Marginal potency, we are not directly servant of Krishna. We are servant of a servant of a servant of a servant of Krishna. So if someone out of full Siva for the sake of gaining some mundane prestige is thinking I am not Vaishnava and I am worshipable, I can control others, I can take donations from others, I can take worship from others. Further in that song, Bhakti Thakur is saying, Nija Shreshta Mani Uchi I will give my remnants to others, thinking I am superior. And others, Uchi Shtadi Dane, Uchi Adi, means headed by Uchi but other things also, advice, so many things. Then my false ego will, burden of my false ego will grow. So that is false ego. A real guru, he never thinks I'm a guru or I'm a pure devotee. He always sees himself as a servant of the servant of the servant, servant of Krishna. And if they order him to preach, then they will do as a service, not as self-enjoyment for name and fame. And they will not take any credit, even on the day when disciples, they will worship him, the Asa Puja day. They will never take that respect for themselves. They are offering everything to their Guru because it is their Guru who ordered them to do this service and all uh, power and everything is given by Guru. So they have no false ego and they, they never take any credit for anything. It is all the mercy of my Gurudev and Krishna. But if someone has that false ego, I'm a Guru, then that is, he will have to get a lesson. By such kirtan, by the so-called kirtan performed by such persons, those who have this ego, I am a guru, I am a Vaishnava, for the sake of getting respect and wealth and these things, and forgetful of their true self. What is true self? Is I am a servant of a servant of a servant of a Vaishnava, who is a servant of Krishna. So by such kirtan, even faithful disciples will not attain the eligibility to hear Hari's name because the, there is no Hari's name there. That is mundane sound. Hari's name, real name, can descend to a surrendered soul. Otherwise you have no contact with the name. So those disciples of such guru, they never have a chance to hear actual name or get qualification to hear the name. How, if guru is not established in that surrender, how he will inspire that surrender in, in disciples? So they can never get that eligibility qualification to come in contact with the name. So it is very important. So this third verse, Shikastaka, is to be practiced as much as possible. We have to chant Harinam sincerely, avoiding these uh, offenses and practicing uh, these things as far as possible. Tolerance, humbleness, by more and more engagement in the service of Krishna, chanting the name, more our heart will be purified and the more we can get such qualities naturally. But at the same time also, we have to try to practice those while chanting these four qualities to not desire respect from others, to give due respect. Maybe you are not having realization direct, but you should, our good so you should think Krishna is residing in the heart of everyone. 
And humbleness means to always remember that you are not of this world, you are of Krishna and of his servants. And tolerance that verse, Tatenu uh, Kampam, something is happening, we should remind ourselves that it is Krishna who is giving the result through that person. He is only instrumental, he is not to be blamed. Krishna is giving results, so to practice all these four qualities, you have to practice as much as possible in our stage and to chant as much as possible. And <clears throat> consciously avoiding committing offenses, or if we commit offense, then to pray for forgiveness and to surrender to the name and chant constantly. Sometime, a fixed time, we have to count on Japa Mala, and all other time, always we have to try to chant. Always, when doing any work in bathroom, driving car, all the time we have to try. Then gradually, <clears throat> our heart will be more and more pure, and real self will more and more awake, and false self will more and more be subdued, then more and more these qualities will also naturally appear. I heard from Vaishnavas that in this Trinata Pisanichana there is also percentage. It is not like only black and white. Either you are like Trinata Pisanichana or you are uh, out. No, there is percentage according to the degree of surrender and chanting and purification up to that point you have you got you get such qualities and also you are able to practice online means uh, in the beginning we do something wrong then later on we regret repent we are not able to immediately practice when the situation comes only after some time, but gradually we will be able immediately already practice tolerance, humility. Like Jesus also, he was tolerant because connection with God on that cross. He did not want to take any revenge. He said they don't know what they are doing and he prayed for their welfare. Like Horida Stakur, when they were beating him, wanting to kill him, he was also praying for their welfare. So we have to try as much as possible. We are singing this song, Shri Krishna Kirtane Jodi, Mana Satohar, Parama Jatane Tohi Logo Odikar. If you want to chant Krishna's name, then you uh, be careful to try to get qualification. Paramajatane tohi lo bodhikar. Trinadi kohi no Humble and bread of grass and without any material possessions. One may have so many material possessions, but he will not think I am the owner, like Ambrish Maharaj. He knows everything belongs to Krishna and all this we have to practice and chant as much as possible and gradually we can come to be fully well established in Trinada Pisunichana. Then a real name will be there. I remember today when I was reading this, now when I was reading this uh, commentary, one god brother of Gurdev, Aniruddha Prabhu, he himself is chanting three lakhs daily. Now, and during the time of Parangurdev, Parangurdev told him to chant one lakh. Then when he went to pension after uh, finishing his job, then Parangurdev in dream told him, now you chant two lakhs. So he was chanting and then again three lakhs. But if he's engaged in preaching, then that day he said he cannot do. But he told during the time of Parangurdev, 
and our Gurudev was also there. So he said, after Prasad in the mat, mostly all other brahmacharis, they used to take rest after Prasad. But your Gurudev, I saw him. Your Gurudev, he went to the roof in a secluded place and he was chanting Harinam with great concentration. I saw him. He was chanting and I was observing. Then suddenly his body color changed, became golden. First was like normal, then suddenly it became golden, shining. Then Aniruddha Prabhu told us, because at that time Krishna appears in his heart. Chanting real name, then Krishna appears. That is why that shine is coming. So he said, I was observing this, I saw. And since I saw Gurudev first time, from first time till always I saw him shining because Krishna manifests all the time. So if someone is sincerely chanting and his heart becomes pure, then Krishna will appear there. 